What's going on fellas? This video is for Juan. We're doing an endurance experiment on this high output ozone generator. We're running at about 800 watts of power here, which is fairly substantial for an ozone electrode this size. This is what we have inside of this thing right now. It's basically doing exactly what you see, except um, this is a 25 inch unit and we're running at about 31 inches, I think it was, on the unit that we're looking at in the video here. So this is a dual gap electrode. There's a corona taking place inside both gaps and there's oxygen gas traveling through both of those gaps. In this test, we're at about 6.7 amps and it's about 1.7 amps higher than what we're actually running on the test that we're gonna see tonight. I just wanted you guys to see what's inside this machine. So there's, got, there's our oxygen concentrator here. We're running at two liters per minute, 95% oxygen. This is the power supply, a five kilowatt, uh, 10 to 14 kilovolts, two to nine kilohertz on the power supply. Here is our water discharge. Right now we haven't started it up yet. So the temperature hasn't heated up at all. I've got thermal couples in place. Okay, last time it took us three hours to oxidize four cc's of red food coloring back into clear water. So let's see how long this I'm takes. Turn it down. I really don't want to blow a quartz tube. We are running with water cooling now. And we are heating that water up. See, we're at 21.7 out and 18 Celsius in. Oh yeah, our amperage is climbing here. I need to lower the power. I'm gonna hold it at five amps, just for the sake of safety. We are at 790 watts of ozone production coming out of this bad boy right now. This is an uh, insane amount of ozone. Okay, the smell is extremely powerful coming off of this thing. That's why I have it outdoors. I'm about ready to close the door to the shop. I'm gonna go ahead and start the clock. I'm gonna keep this right at five amps because you've seen what happened when we ran at seven amps. We burn a hole right through the quartz tube. So we're gonna keep it at five amps with water cooling. That's a discharge temp. And that's the intake temp. So we are heating up a little bit. I'm gonna get a thermal imaging camera on this thing after it's run for about a half hour. This is the first endurance test at 700 watts. This is an insane amount of ozone production. So I'm pretty impressed with this setup. However, as far as making these electrodes longer, the test I've done did not work out too well. I don't know how well we're going to be able to pull that off because we need a higher frequency to resonate with a larger electrode. I am a little worried about the transformer. I got to keep an eye on that. My oil tank isn't here yet. They told me this thing needs to be in an oil tank when we're running at 14 kilovolts. However, I, I kind of think they lied to us. I think this is just the 10 kilovolt transformer. A gap test kind of proves that. So this is what we're doing. Here is the coolant flow rate. It takes one minute and 28 seconds to fill this gallon jug up. I'm afraid to touch it, it might shock me. <laughs> we got about 10,000 volts cranking through this bad boy. It is 12 a.m. on the dot, so we're moving on into tomorrow already. The power supply. And we're worried about this transformer not being in an oil bath. It's getting hot. Not really hot, hot though. The damn cooling fans are getting hotter than anything. Okay, unfortunately, I don't have any tape on this thing. Uh, I forgot to put some black electric tape on the cell itself so we could get a true reading of its temperature. It's going to be more along the lines of this right here. 
This is all plastic here. Okay, Juan, on some of these power supplies, there's something known as a dip switch. And I want to show you how to use the dip switch. Right there's the dip switch. And just below it, you'll see the frequency potentiometer. And then right here, we have the pulse width potentiometer. So to achieve the maximum power setting on these ozone electrodes is a process they call debugging. And let's say if you turn the frequency potentiometer all the way up and the amperage continues to increase all the way till you're maxed out on both this potentiometer and also the external connected one. What you would then have to do so for the sake of illustration, we'll say that we started off at the dip switch set at 2. We turn the frequency all the way up, and we find that we're still increasing in amperage, as if we had more room to go. So what we would then do is turn the machine off. It's very important that you disconnect the machine or you will damage the power supply anytime you adjust a dip switch. So you turn the machine off, and... You adjust the dip switch to the next setting lower to increase the frequency. So you would then flip the, the number one switch on. So what we would do there is then adjust the frequency again until we hit the maximum amperage. Now let's say the reverse side of that. Let's say we would turn the potentiometer all the way down and the amperage was still rising. The frequency decreases counterclockwise, increases clockwise. So if we turn it all the way down and the amperage on the ammeter is still going up, it shows we have more room. We would then decrease the frequency by turning off the machine and turning the dip switch to third gear. Now this thing has a fourth gear, but they don't tell you what it is in the instructions. And because they say toggling this with the machine off will damage it that leads one to believe if all circuits are in the off position the machine will be damaged if there is power to the board so we certainly know all off is not the fourth gear so is all on fourth gear i'm afraid to try it it could destroy the power um the transformer so i'm waiting on some input from the manufacturer regarding that question but you need to know this stuff because anytime you change the pressure or the oxygen content, you will then have to adjust the frequency accordingly. Um, increase in pressure does require a modification of input frequency. The transformer that you have is a 2 to 9 kilohertz. So this is what I have discovered is how to run this. Now, it wasn't easy figuring this out. The instructions are translated from Chinese, and it's not very happy, as they would say. And it's important that you know this because a specific gas pressure is going to have its very own resonance frequency. I don't know why it does that, but changing gas composition or changing the gas pressure in one of those ozone cells is going to require you to tune that transformer to the maximum current draw once again or at least the current draw that you're trying to achieve I'm gonna rate these tubes probably around six amps is what it's starting to look like we blew one up at seven ran one all night at five amps okay so we got water cooling on it now it's a different story so that's what I'm trying to pin down for you here is how to adjust the resonance frequency because the size of the electrode is directly proportional to the resonance frequency based on the capacitor on the circuit board. Basically what I'm getting at Juan is that when you go to dial in the resonance of your ozone electrodes you're gonna find a situation where you'll be increasing the frequency and the power will go up and then suddenly you'll hit a point where further increasing the frequency will cause the power to actually go back down again on your ammeter. 
So you're trying to hit this sweet spot in the peak, so to say. So by dialing in that frequency just right, you'll scan back and forth when you finally get within range. And by looking at the ammeter, you'll be able to find the highest point of power draw within the knob. But what I'm saying is, if you turn the knob down all the way, because sometimes you need to decrease frequency to achieve resonance, which then increases the power input to the ozone electrode. So if you're turning it down and you turn it all the way down, and let's say the amperage is going up from four amps and you keep turning it down and it goes all the way up to six amps when you hit rock bottom and it seemed like it would have went further if you had more knob the way you get more knob out of that dial is to set the dip switch that opens up the spectrum of the bandwidth available and the frequency of that driver so you're gonna depending on the size of your ozone electrode you're gonna have to either increase or decrease the frequency to find that resonance zone. The best way to describe to you what resonance is inside that power transformer is you have these magnetic fields collapsing and rising. So imagine you're pushing a child on a swing set and if you push the child at the right moment as they come back at you and if you push just as they're leaving the child will swing higher and higher on the swing. But if you try to push the child as they're coming back at you, you're going to slap them in the back and it's probably going to knock them out of the swing. That's because you're not in resonance with the child. So to achieve resonance, you adjust the frequency of your arm with the pendulum motion of the child on the swing. So we are kind of doing that with magnetic fields in the transformer because the ozone electrode is a capacitor. That's all it is. It's a capacitor. And we have to dance with the resonant capacitant load of the, that ozone electrode. So changing the size, the gas, or any of that stuff is going to be problematic. You can't just have a plug-it-in transformer to do this. You're going to need control over a lot of things. I'm sure you guys probably already know this stuff about resonance. And if you do, I apologize for insulting your intelligence and speaking like we're in a grade school science class here. But just had to bring it up just in case you're wondering. I wanted you to visualize what it is we're doing with the resonance thing here. It's fundamentally the most important part of getting the power supply dialed in. Okay, we're an hour in. It is 1 a.m. Burning some midnight oil here. It already looks clear or cleared up a little. I should say. I'm gonna try and leave that light in the same spot every time. Okay, Juan, one thing to keep in mind on the rating of this thing here. Now, in the test where we seen the quartz tube fail, we were around seven amps, and we had been running at 10 amps prior to that. When I removed the inner electrode after the tube failed, it was a straw color indicating we hit temperatures of 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So, because we didn't have the water cooling on during that test, what I'm getting at is we very well may be able to run this thing at up to 10 amps with the water cooling in place. We, and we would need a higher oxygen flow for that much power, in my, in my opinion. I don't have an ozone meter to verify that. So that's where we are with that. Um, after this test is done, we have to make a decision. Do we want to crank it up another amp and run it until we finally hit a failure point with the water cooling on? That's kind of what we need to do. And uh, that's the trek we're on right now. After this test, I'm just gonna push it to the limit. We'll do six amps next run it for three hours at six amps and um, go from there okay we are one and a half hours in and wow look at that guys dramatic change looks like apple cider now so we are definitely far more powerful and this is uh, a very good visual indicator of that this is the only other way i can show you that we are in fact creating far more ozone. Um, 
almost twice as much I would say with this type of speed 5.2 amps 823 watts Man, I can smell that ozone bad from here. And I'm in a completely opened area. Another thing I need to point out about this dip switch and the frequency band we have to work with. I was unable to get a larger ozone electrode to work the same way as the smaller ones that we've seen. Um, I believe based on the current setting that we need a higher frequency to build a larger electrode because i'm still able to get a power increase as we are increasing the frequency knob we hit a dead spot where we can no longer go any higher okay we're two hours in and this stuff has cleared up substantially Get it off of that wood. The wood makes it look yellower than it is. So two hours and we have a huge difference. 17 Celsius input temp. 23.3 degrees output. 5 amps, 800 watts. This is two hours in. And we're pretty much cleared up, guys. We're two hours in on that test, and basically, we're not going to be able to notice much more of a color change from this point on. So, pretty much going to call that done. I am going to let it go for another half hour. But I wanted to talk about this test electrode that we've seen. Now, this is the test electrode setup that we uh, burnt a hole in the quartz tube with. Now, the actual electrode size would be represented by this piece of tubing right here. This is the corona area. Okay, the rest of this stuff means nothing. It's, it's shape or, or length is nothing. So, with a corona... Um, discharge area of the size of this tube we um, were able to achieve 10 amps at one point on that cell but as the cell heated up it would not uh, allow us to run as much power and I think that may be because the air that's in there was pressed out of there just because it got so hot it got over 400 degrees in there instantly so Having this thing water cooled, we may have been able to run it at 10 amps, but the point I'm getting at is that um, the size is very important when it comes to reaching resonance based on the capacitor and the frequency that we're running at. So this smaller size was able to run at a higher power as far as I know. I'm afraid to run the cell we have currently testing any higher than it is because I don't want to burn a hole in the tube just yet. So we're kind of taking a look at that. But our next step is to increase amperage. So far, it's looking like I will not be able to get as much power as we got out of this one. That tells me that um, the transformer setup we have does not have the frequency band. We need to go higher in frequency to get larger. The cell that we are currently testing has the dip switch set on first gear or the number one switch. And that is said to put us at 9 kilohertz, I think. It's a little hard to tell because the fourth gear thing is not described in the instructions. This stuff here wasn't even described in the descriptions very well. You had to kind of boil all the water out of it to figure this out. But that's where we're at. Um, we beat the old time by an hour. So definitely a huge improvement. Well, it's the next day, and I forgot to take a look at our copper sample. That was why I had this copper sitting on top. I wanted to see the effects, and even the effects on this copper are far more prominent than the last test. We didn't get any black discoloration like this last time. So the ozone content of this unit is um, far more concentrated. 
by far. All right, Juan, so our next step is to fire this thing up and run it at six amps and see how long it can withstand that. And what I have to do is climb the ladder until I get to a point where I start breaking quartz tube again. Last time we did this, it was at seven amps without any cooling. I'm almost positive that the fact we didn't have any cooling system in place is why we failed at seven amps. I believe we can run this thing at seven amps and be okay which is a tremendous amount of power. But uh, we gotta gradually step into it so that I can tell you the rating of these cells.